Hi, I'm, I'm Gosol San from Cambodia. Today I'm so thankful that I have this great opportunity to share my testimony about my life um, before I got saved, how my life was, and after I got saved, how it is now. What was your life before um, you got saved? My life before was like in the dark. I didn't know where I was going, I didn't know what I was doing, and I just followed my um, tradition and a culture in my village because um, you know I was born and grew up in a Muslim family all the people in my village like uh, they are uh, Muslims so they just follow they have strict uh, laws and rules in the community what type of rules do you guys have you know we have we are we are both supposed to go to a mosque the mosque in our village every week and we also need every year I think annually we also have to um, um, offer sacrifice, offer sacrifice, and uh, you know we were like completely controlled by um, the Muslim leader there. We got no freedom at all. What do you mean a sacrifice? Like in our culture, we were supposed to um, give sacrifice to um, God, the the Lord. They say they say Allah, Allah mm -hmm. Muhammad, in, in in the mosque in our village. Oh. So uh, we um, uh, we uh, offer um, um, four goats annually. Like you sacrifice them? Yes, we burn, we burn, we burn the four goats. Oh wow! Yes, that's that's how we did. Uh, that's now do Muslims do that in other countries also, or yes. just here in Cambodia? Around the world. Oh wow! I've I've never heard of that. Once a year they do they do like that. And so, uh, what town was you raised in here in Cambodia? What town? Yeah, Mung Chinang Province. Okay, is that the name? So your name of your town? What is the name of the town, or is it a village? The name of the town. And what is it again? Kampung Chinang. Okay. Good. And that, that's a Muslim community? Mm -hmm, Muslim community. So uh, by then... What was it like um, growing up as a child in a Muslim home? It was kind of really, really hard. We, uh, as I told you, we got no freedom. We were told what to do and what not to do. And we were supposed to um, obey all the rules and laws in our village. And just like we have a, you know, we, we have a, commute, a communist leader there. I mean, I would say he's a communist leader. Mm. So nobody would say no to him. So whatever he says, then people have to follow, have to be... Um, now, you, are you talking about just be, be clean? Like, I grew up in a, a so-called Christian community. We had rules of be clean. No. What, when you say there was rules, then what, what are you speaking about? You know, in, in, a, in, a Muslim fam in Muslim community, Everything um, is um, uh, control is um, how do you say is control is yeah is control is is overseen by a a big guy we call imam imam okay. have you ever heard of that I have yeah yeah so imam is the one who controls who is who is in control of everything in the village well how did you become a Christian that's a good question I remember like when I was eighteen I mean yes eighteen. You know, I grew up in, the, in my uh, in my village, in my family, and as I told you, I didn't I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, I didn't know um, uh, a lot of things in my life. But one day, I got a, a, a very um, how I would say a very bad experience. I was haunted. I was haunted. You understand when I say I was haunted? Yes. Like for about two or three years, my life was in fear. I was living in fear. What was you fearing? Ghost, there was spirit. Okay. It would came to me every night, sometimes during the daytime. It came to me, haunted me, and a lot of times I remember I cried. Mm. I was, um, you know, um, in big trouble. And then I um, decided I talked to my mom about that. And I, my mom brought me, I mean, brought me to uh, some witch doctors. We were trying to. Um, you know, find out how it can, it, it could be helped. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we spent a lot of money, but you know, hopeless. It didn't help me at all. Nobody could help me. It, like some witch doctors, uh, gave me something to protect me from the evil spirit, but only helped me for like a couple of days. And after uh, that time, same thing happened over and over. I was so hopeless. I was living in fear, and then. To say, well, it's not true God. If true God, I mean, what I was doing in the village and community, I believe in Muhammad. So Muhammad couldn't help me. So I was so hopeless. I had despairs. So then I decided one day to move to Phnom Penh. 
the, the study in, in college. But now in Cambodia. Mm -hmm, okay. in the capital city of Cambodia. So um, I came here, I um, went to college, and one day God um, brought me to a, an, American, an American missionary brother board. He came here 10 years ago and we met, I met with him. He invited me to have dinner with his family. He was such a kind guy and I was wondering how come this guy is so kind to me compared to my uh, people in the village. This is totally different. So he witnessed to me about Jesus and um, actually I didn't believe Jesus. I mean, I, d I didn't like that much about Jesus. Had you ever heard about Jesus before? I did. And when I was in the village, I, I, I heard about Jesus before. And then I thought it was just for foreigners. It was just a foreign religion. So in Cambodia, we have our own religions. Have one religion, Muhammad, for um, uh, Muslims, and you know Buddhism for Khmer people. So I thought it was just a foreign religion. Then it kept being things to me. But one thing that uh, convicted my heart was um, one Bible verse in Genesis one one. It says, uh, "In the beginning, God created." heavens and earth and then his uh, uh, brother Bart said you know what the whole world was created by God and that God is Jesus no other God I said what so meaning that what I believed before what I, I did before was actually wrong I said yes and I kind of realized I kind of, it makes sense to me because you know I had problems and that God didn't help me couldn't help me at all but then he, I told him my problems about how I, I had been haunted many times, how my life was uh, living in fear and stuff like that, got no hope. And then like he said, well, he explained to me that, that there's Satan, that there, there was spirit. Mm -hmm. Then um, he said, you know what? We Christians, when we believe in God, like Ephesians chapter, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13 says that, after we become the child, after we confess our sins, after we um, have Jesus, I mean we um, believe in Jesus, we are sealed with the Holy Spirit who can protect us, mm -hmm. who can lead us and guide us. So we can have freedom, liberty, living in God, God's kingdom. That's really, really impressed me. I said, oh wow, impressed me because I was living in fear, a lot of problems. I mean, spirits, bad spirits trying to haunt me. But then I didn't. I didn't decide you know, right away to accept Jesus. So you know, I, I kept the Bible he gave me, and then you know, study more and more. And one verse that really, really converted my heart is uh, John um, three thirteen. So right, for, for God so loved the world so much, He gave His only begotten Son, like that. And meaning Jesus died on the cross for me. And I researched about Jesus. I had to search about the history of Israel and stuff like that and I came to realize that, wow, it's undeniable, Jesus is God. Mm. So then I accepted Jesus in my room. I knelt down and talked to Jesus and invited Jesus to come and cleanse my sins. I knew I was a sinner back then. But then, you know, after I got saved, my life was like, I mean, it's totally different. I live in the light. How is your life different today? Everything completely different. I know what I'm doing for. I know why I'm here, I know where I'm at, so and basically we have hope, the hope that we can go to heaven after we die, before I didn't know anything about that, the hope that we now um, are brought out of hell and one day we are going to heaven. And can I ask you some questions about your Christianity and your family? Mm -hmm. When you was uh, meeting with um, this missionary mm -hmm. at first, and you said he gave you a Bible? Mm -hmm. Did you go to your family and, and read the Bible with them? Or um, did you tell them about Jesus, what you was learning? Mm -hmm. Yes, that's a good question. Um, yes, I did. I did like that, like what you asked me. After I got the Bible, I brought. I went back home to my village in Kampung Chinan uh, province. It's a town. And uh, I showed, I showed the, the Bible to them. And how did they respond? First. They, especially my dad, he said, it's just a foreign religion. Don't ever um, convert yourself to another one. So he said, just read it and don't pay much attention to, uh, don't pay much attention to it. 
but then you know after after I got saved I know that it is the true the word of God it's the true word of God so I share with them and eventually my brothers got saved my sister got saved my mom and uncle a few uncles got saved my brother-in-law got saved a lot of people got saved we were so excited we you know had a lot of joy in our life family together because so you went back to your Muslim family and they just easily accepted this and no problems? Oh, no Because way. many Muslims in the world I hear, if someone becomes a Christian, they experience turmoil and problems. Yes, that's, that's, that's a very good question. Um, actually, when I first accepted Jesus, I told them they thought I was faking. Oh, huh. They thought I was only you know, looking for a job from a foreigner, from, Amer from an American. But then they didn't know I was a true believer, so so they didn't, they didn't you know um, stop me from you know coming to church and stuff like that. But you know I I kept coming, I kept I showing my testimony, go back to the village, and of course I got problems, a lot of problems. You know um, after I witnessed to my people, they all hated me, except my brothers, except my mom and my brother-in-law. So um, they all believe in the Word of God, they all believe in Jesus, they accepted Jesus also um, over years ago. But then, there was a big persecution. And the one who um, initiated that persecution was my dad. My dad. And how did they persecute you? Um, for me it's not a big deal because I am in Phnom Penh, but for my people, they are my mom. My other relatives who got saved already had a lot of problems. Like at night, they couldn't sleep well. Sometimes people in the village would throw uh, rocks into their house. Through their windows? Yeah, windows. That's horrible. Yes, and also, um, you no. Know, I remember one one um, one day a few guys want wanted to hurt my mom. They wanna they hit my mom. They turned my mom. My dad, um, some Islam, I mean Muslim leaders, to my house, and threatened my mom to deny Jesus. He said, "You deny Jesus, you live with your husband and with the people in the village. You don't deny Jesus, and divorced, no choice." But I thank God for my mom's testimony. She decided to walk with the Lord. I know, um, I, I remember she was weeping, crying. I know it was a hard time for her to um, decide. I know she loved her husband a lot, but she loved the Lord more than, more than that. So she decided to um, walk with Jesus. And you know, she's living in a great life with her family. So um, she and her husband are divorced today? Yes, sir. And also, um, we've got some more problems. I remember also um, about three, four years ago. Yeah, I think three, four years ago, we uh, went back. I, you know, a, a group of uh, men here from Phnom Penh uh, traveled to the village just to have the morning service there in the village. And then there was a, a, a big crowd of people waiting for us. They got their sticks and knives waiting for us. They actually want to attack us. They want to kill us. Mm -hmm. You know and. We um, no choice need to um, evacuate our people, and we need to run away from the village, and went to another village to um, have the service there. And uh, one of my friends also got um, a big problem in his family because he's 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 the only one in his family as a Christian, so his dad and mom wouldn't allow him to go anywhere. He was locked in the house. He was not allowed to go anywhere. He was crying a lot back then. He told me. About two or three days he was in the house, but one day he decided he got a chance, so he decided to um, get out of the house and ran away from his house, went to uh, the woods far away from his house, and he stayed there for about two, I think two days, and one night without food, without water, stayed there praying to God, mm. and um, it's a really, really good encouragement to me, and uh, and, and 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 then um, you know we met and I brought him to Phnom Penh, and, and now he's he been serving the Lord for about five years been faithfully coming to church, drive, driving tuk-tuk and you know, cleaning and stuff. 
Same so he lives here in Phnom Penh with you? Yes, okay. yes. And you know, so a lot of persecution happened about four years ago, but you know, our people keep walking with the Lord, keep enduring, and endure all things, all hardships, and now God bless us, God helped us. We got more and more people get saved every month, every month. What does the Lord Jesus have you doing now? Okay, um, the Lord want me um, to um, help lots of people, especially my um, village people. It's not easy for you know Muslim to um, convert to a Christianity. It's hard. So you know, God always speaks to my heart to be uh, to stand strong, to be to have a good testimony, and to bring the gospel to to witness to them, and also. Um, uh, to help especially um, poor children, poor children, a lot of poor children there. I want to help them, you know, to, 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 to know Jesus, to help them to have a good life. Because I know how uh, de desperate their life is in the village. You know, Islam is growing rapidly across the world. Mm -hmm. In America, in Asia, Latin America, everywhere. Um, I hear many Muslims complain that Christians are trying to make Muslims become Christians and they have this question is um, why should a Muslim become a Christian? Why do you think a Muslim should become a Christian? Well it is important that everyone become a Christian not just Muslims because we know that you know they need Jesus they need the only true God and no, uh, Jesus Christ is the only true God. They are walking, they are living in darkness. Actually, they got no hope at all. That's why um, they all need to convert to uh, Christians. So you believe that Jesus is hope? Yes, He's the only one that can use And what is And what does that mean, that Jesus is hope? He's the only true God. He's the one who um, overcame uh, death. He was resurrected. He, he came to the earth to die on the cross so that our sins can be forgiven. And one day, we believe in Him, one day we are going to heaven. That's our hope, heaven, everlasting life in, in, in heaven. Oh, how beautiful. Thank you. Is there anything else about your life story that I should know? What else? Um, It's funny just how, how, we, how, how we've been blessed after we, uh, you know, uh, keep standing for the Lord, you know, just a sweet blessing so far. So, yeah, and, and, uh, I think that's it. Well, Kosal, it sincerely is a pleasure to be a friend of yours. Me too. So excited to be a friend of you too.